Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to share with you my macro workflow. We're gonna work on this image. We're gonna start out with an image like this and end up with an image that looks like this. Before I begin, let me state that I'm not really going to be doing anything earth shattering here, but I'm thinking maybe three or four of you might find something in my macro workflow to be interesting. Also, I want to mention that I don't do the same thing to every macro that I work on. Some macro images I find I just have to touch up tone and color and call it a day. Other macro images though, I'll get a little bit more involved with. I might even use some plugins with it. This is one of those macro images, so I'm going to do a lot more work on this image. Now, to begin with, um, it's a RAW file. It was shot with an Nikon Z7 II. You could see the exposure info is here. I used a 105 millimeter uh, Nikon Z macro lens. Um, you could see it was ISO, or I'm sorry, it was a aperture of 40, and even then the depth of field is very shallow but that ISO is relatively high at 800 because I did hand hold the shot. Now, typically what I will do um, with a raw file, I'll look at it and if the shadows are nearly crushed or if the highlights are nearly blown out, I'll take care of that right away and I'll go to the basic tab and move these four sliders, highlight, shadows, whites, and blacks. But in this case, I mean, it's mid-tones to darker. There's nothing really crushed here, nothing blown out. So I'm not worried about that right now. The next thing I want to do to the raw file is white balance. If I need to adjust white balance, I'll do it to the raw file because adjusting white balance in a raw file is much more effective than trying to adjust white balance on a JPEG, TIFF, PSD file, any other type of file. Here, the white balance is fine, so I don't need to worry about that. And finally, the last thing I want to make sure that I do to a raw file as opposed to a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD file is to... Um, if I'm going to change the profile to a camera profile. Let me open up the uh, profile browser and I'm talking about these camera matching profiles. These are only available with the raw file. So if I do send this to a plugin to remove noise, which I'm going to do, it's going to come back as either a TIFF or a PSD file and these camera matching profiles won't be available. So I want to make sure I do that to the raw file. Now with that said, I'm not changing the profile, I'm not adjusting the white balance, and the shadows and highlights aren't um, crushed or blown out respectively. So I, I'm just going to send it right to the plugin uh, to remove noise because it was shot at ISO 800. And if I zoom in, you can see there's a little noise. I mean, the Nikon Z7 II does have very good high ISO performance, but there is a little bit of noise, and I like to use Topaz Labs to noise AI to remove noise. So I'm going to do that right away. I like to do it very early in my workflow because removing noise early in your workflow generally is more effective than trying to do it later in your workflow after you add a lot of contrast and sharpness and, and things like that. So I'm simply going to right click right on the image, go down to edit in, and then go down to Topaz Denoise AI. And you can see it's going to be a TIFF file with these uh, specifications. We're going to edit a copy because when you're using Denoise AI as a plugin, you can't send the raw file there. You have to send it as a TIFF or PSD or JPEG even, but we'll send it as a TIFF and we'll click edit. And Lightroom is now creating this TIFF file. You can see the progress bar in the top left-hand corner and it will open this TIFF file up into Denoise AI. And typically what I will do is I like to use this four panel view. If you go to view, you can see there's single split, side by side, and comparison view. That's what they actually call it, not four panel. And I'll move it somewhere like where I could see noise in the background there. And I'll let it update. It has four different AI models and it's showing us three of them at the same time. This is the standard model. And I'll just put that on auto, see what it looks like. And it looks pretty good. Over here in the bottom left is the clear model and that is already on auto and that looks pretty good. Here's the low light model, and that one is okay. It's not as good as the standard though, and that's on auto as well. It also has a severe noise model, and 
If I click on this here, it will just replace whatever the active model is. Right now, the low light model is the active model. And I'll just click on that. And you can see, actually, that one's not as good as the standard model. So I'll just go on the standard model, make sure that's active. If I felt I wanted to remove a little more noise, I could just move the slider a little more to the right here. If I wanted to enhance sharpness, I could do that as well by moving that slider, but I'm not going to uh, because I'm going to use a different app for that. So we're all set. We're going to click Apply. So I just removed noise using Denoise AI, and now it comes back into Lightroom, and I'll do my normal processing that I would do in Lightroom. And this is where I'm going to probably crop it a little bit. I'm going to adjust the tone and maybe the color a little bit, although it is pretty colorful the way it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it right away. I'm going to open up the crop tool. I'm going to make sure this padlock is locked. I want to keep the original aspect ratio. And I'm just going to move this down and over. So I'm just tightening it up a little bit like that. And we'll close the crop tool, accept that crop. Then we're going to go to the basic tab and I am going to bring highlights down just a little bit, open up shadows a little bit. It pretty much the exposure was perfect um, in my opinion. So I really don't have to do too much here. I am going to get a white point by holding the option key on my Mac. It's alt key on a PC and move this slider to the right. When I start to see some of the color coming through, that means I'm starting to clip those color channels. Just back it off till that last little red dot is gone right there. And that is my white point. And I'll hold, do the same thing for the blacks slider. Hold that option key in on my Mac. Move this to left. And I like to clip the shadows a bit. So we'll see what that looks like. Maybe I'll even eyeball it, move it to the right a little bit. So that's good. Now I'm not going to add any texture clarity to haze because I prefer to do that with a different app, uh, Topaz Lab Sharpen AI, because I just love the way that app does it. So I've I've really just adjusted tone. Uh, that's it. And I really, and I cropped it. And I think I'm ready now to send it to Topaz Labs Sharpen AI. So I'm going to right click on it and go down to edit in and then over to Topaz Sharpen AI. And again, we're going to send a copy. I could send the original, but all those adjustments I just did won't come with it. So I have to send a copy with Lightroom adjustments. I could send a copy without the adjustments, but that would be um, a waste of time. So let's just send copy with Lightroom adjustments with those specs and click edit. So it's gonna make a third version of this image. And that third version will open up into uh, Sharpen AI. And when it does, um, I'll, again, there's these uh, three different models. We have motion blur, autofocus, and two soft. What I like to do is just turn on auto and let the application look at the image and pick one that it thinks it needs. In this case, it's picked motion blur. And then I'll, you know, go from there. I could just click on the image with the mouse, like left mouse button, and there's before, and there's after. Before, after. Again, I have it set to auto, but I'll double check and check everything else. The other two modes, models, I should say, beside motion blur is out of focus. That one doesn't look like it did anything. And too soft. And that one too doesn't look like it did anything. Now I could come in and just, you know, try to, you know, move the sliders more, but it looks like motion blur is the one that is working. And that makes sense. I did handhold this. So there's before and there's after. Now we do have auto settings. I could come off that and move these around. I could try uh, some of these different sub modes for the motion blur. There's the normal. You can see that doesn't look too sharp. Very noisy. I already moved noise, so that's not applicable. And very blurry. And we'll let it render. And there it goes. There's before and after. Before, after. I think that looks pretty good uh, just like that. So we're just going to click Apply. And then it's going to bring this image back up into Lightroom. And then I'll do... Um, I'll finish my, my, um, processing. I like to do a little bit of dodge and burn, um, you know, with, uh, images. I kind of like to control where the person is looking when they look at my image. Uh, typically a person will look at the brighter areas first and the more in focused areas first. Now in this image in camera, I did a okay job of 
making sure that these three little puff balls are in focus as best as possible. And using Sharpen, they're really in focus and the background's pretty blurry. I think using, doing some dodging and burning though will help me better emphasize those and allow or kind of influence people's vision when they look at the image, they'll look more towards at those more at those. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I could use a brush, but I'm going to use the uh, radial filter. And what I'll do is I'll just reset it by double clicking on the word effect. So we'll reset it. And what I want to do is I want to bring exposure down. And I think, I think I need to click on that invert, but we'll see in a minute when I do this. Nope, it's going to be the other way around. So I'm going to unclick the invert. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll pull this around. And what we're doing is anything outside of this oval I've drawn will get darkened, as you can see like that, all right? So we'll, we don't want it that dramatic, but we'll bring it out. So we're darkening everywhere around the outside of these three little puffball flowers, whatever they're called. All right, so that's, that's good, just like that. Now, I want to add a second one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to brighten up these two um, outside balls a little better. So to do that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this, um, this overlay by hitting the H key on my keyboard. And then I'll be able to draw another one right here. Now I'll hit the H key again while I'm drawing it so I can see it. Well, after I draw it like that, there we go. And then we could bring it out now like this. And then we'll, on this one, we're going to brighten that middle part. See how we're brightening that up? So we're doing some dodging and burning. That's effectively what we're doing, at least. So I brighten that one up. Now I want to do the same thing for this one. So for this one, all I'm going to do is right-click right on that little button in the middle, or that pin, they call it, and click on Duplicate, then drag that one over there. So we now have three. We have one relatively round one over this puffball, another relatively round one over this little puffball flower. And then we have one that is over all three and it is affecting the outside, whereas the other ones are affecting the inside. So let's do a before after and see where we stand. There's before. So there's before we do did the dodging and burning and there's after the dodging and burning. Now I could come in and try to affect these a little more, maybe bring this one out a little more like that. Maybe this one too. Now, if I want, I want to bring this side in, but leave this side out. What I could do is hold, see if I move it just now, it's going to move both the left and right side. If I just want to move this side, hold the Alt Option key, Alt if you have PC option, if you have a Mac, and then you could just move that side all by itself. And then I'll come out here and spin that a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. So there's before and there's after. And you notice I didn't add any um, color adjustments at all. No um, vibrance, no saturation. I didn't go to the HSL tab at all. Didn't need to. It's pretty colorful as is. And that is very natural looking. That's the way it looked. Um, still not quite happy with this one. This one in the lower right. So what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to brighten that one up just a touch more. Maybe like that. Just like that. And I'm done with the radial filter and then I think I'm just going to even influence the person looking at it a little more by darkening the edges a bit more by going to effects going to this vignette uh, amount slider and just move it to the left so I'm pushing everyone more towards the middle like that and I think that's done uh, so there is before and there is after and before after now that of course is the before after of the image after the noise was removed and after sharpen was done to it uh topaz lab sharpen ai so their noise has already been removed sharpen ai has already been done and it has been cropped and there is after i've done all the other adjustments and the dodging and burning so that's kind of like my full repertoire of how i would go about adjusting a macro but again i want to stress that Often, all I'm adjusting is, I'm not sending it to a plugin. All I'm adjusting are highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and I might add a little bit of sharpening, and I might add a little bit of vibrance or saturation, and I'm done. But 
Um, kind of wanted to give you this one because um, I did a lot more to this. I posted this to my Instagram this morning and I just thought I'd share with you my process. And that's it. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>